Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the moon. Well, actually, we're going to be talking about the effects of Earth on the moon, of which you may not be aware of. Now, our image of the moon currently is that it's a very inhospitable, very dark and very dead world where there's nothing really happening, but that's not entirely true. And as you'll find out in this video, there is actually quite a lot of interesting things going on. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> Now this idea actually came to me from Facebook from a person by the name of Vicky Costello who actually um, kind of asked me a really simple question. So what exactly does the Earth magnetic field do to the moon? And despite the initial confusion about the question, I actually realized that she was onto something really, really cool. Specifically here we're talking about the effects of the magnetic field when Earth... Um, and moon acquire what's known as a syzygy, basically when they form a straight line between Earth, moon and the sun. And we're going to form this line in a second by advancing time just a little bit so that the moon and the Earth and the sun are in the same, uh, on the same line. So right about now, when they are basically in the same sort of location, this is when moon actually passes through Earth's magnetic field. Uh, so let's just try to demonstrate this. We're going to go into materials and enable the magnetic field. Now it actually doesn't show here in this particular game, but in reality the Earth's magnetic field actually goes all the way to the moon um, and even past it. So there's actually a very very long ta tail that goes all the way there. So we might have to actually increase our magnetic field here just to demonstrate this. And so there we go, we made this a little bit more extreme, a little bit more powerful than it actually is in real life, but at least now it actually goes uh, through, uh, through the moon, it basically touches it. In other words, the moon is actually covered by the, by the magnetic field um, at least uh, once a month for a few days. Now let's actually roll this a little bit and let's talk about what's actually happening on the surface of the moon when this occurs. So. Now, first of all, uh, what moon passes is actually not the actual magnetic field, but it passes through what's known as the magnetotail. Magnetotail is basically uh, the leftover from a magnetic field that is created by um, the squeezage and the stretching of the actual magnetic field uh, by the effects of the solar radiation. This is actually what the picture looks of this looks like. And so here, um, our entire planet is actually enveloped in, uh, in this bubble, but the moon gets a bit of the magnetic tail at least once a month. And specifically here, it's going to happen right about now, and it's going to last for about six days. So about three days right before the total uh, or full moon. So if you ever see a full moon in, in the skies, that's basically when the magnetic field does, does hit the moon, and I think it's actually going to be a little bit uh, more visible now because I've increased the magnetic field a little bit more. So for about uh, six days it's going to hit the moon and uh, something will actually happen on the surface. Now what will happen is actually quite interesting. We didn't really know about this and we still have no idea exactly what other effects uh, the magnetic tail has on the moon but one of the effects we've witnessed is that it does create a kind of a almost like an atmosphere of dust um, in the uh, darker regions of the moon and specifically right here on the border of the night and the day. Uh, and this is actually something we've witnessed back in 1968 during the Surveyor 7 mission that actually witnessed these unusual patterns of various uh, moon dust that basically created a very strange horizon glow after dark. Uh, but that's not it. So let's actually do a little bit more science here and talk a little bit about what's going on. So the magnetic tail is essentially a kind of a gigantic plasma uh, sheath that is really, really, really hot and is full of these really highly charged particles uh, that are then, is, uh, they basically strike the surface of the moon and uh, as they strike the surface of the moon, they actually uh, turn the charge of the moon, the um, overall charge of the moon to negative. And um, on the, on the light side, on the sun side of the moon, um, this charge is then removed by the actual sunlight from the sun and uh, it's kind of sort of cancelled. But, but on the twilight side and also on the dark side, there's nothing there to basically remove the charge. And so this part and also this part of the moon becomes very, very highly negatively charged to the point where there's actually quite a lot of static electricity and a lot of sparks that not only are kind of dangerous to 
to any kind of a space mission or a colony, but will also possibly even damage equipment um, on a spacecraft, uh, can actually damage astronauts themselves and can electrocute them, and um, is responsible for creating these unusual dust uh, storms, or I guess dust clouds which are basically formed by the static electricity that causes a lot of this dust here to levitate and to um, lift from the ground. Now, now I'm going to try to simulate this kind of a phenomenon by adding a bunch of uh, randomly generated dust particles right here, right above the surface of the moon. So essentially every time the uh, magnetosphere or I guess magnetotail passes through uh, moon surface, this is what kind of forms around it. So there's all of these particles that get charged and they start orbiting, well I guess they don't create the, these collisions though, but they start orbiting around uh, the surface and kind of move around in, in, on the dark side, they move around on the twilight side and create um, unusual dust storms for about six days when uh, the moon is actually inside the uh, magnetotail of our own magnetosphere. But the reason why these dust particles start flying is not because of any kind of atmospheric pressure or atmosphere, because there's obviously almost none on the moon, but it's actually because of the uh, charge difference between the negative dark side and the somewhat neutral um, or slightly less negative uh, bright side of the moon. So here, because of the charge difference, they start kind of going in um, around the moon and they start moving around and basically almost orbit around the surface of the moon. And uh, because there's so many particles orbiting, it can actually create quite a lot of problems for potentially future co um, colonization missions because these particles are relatively fine, they're very, very small, and uh, there's going to be quite a lot of them. So this kind of a dust storm can actually uh, easily clog machinery, can basically create really dark environments for astronauts to work and uh, to the point where they might not even be able to see anything. And if they move fast enough, they can even scratch things and possibly even pierce things like, for example, different hoses or even glass plates of the astronaut's helmets. And this unusual effect that causes these particles to fly um, has a name of electrostatic levitation. It's something that we actually observe on our planet Earth many times and it's been recreated in the lab as well. Um, but here it's created naturally by uh, the magnetic tail and to some lesser extent by the actual solar radiation as well because it does kind of create charge on the surface of the moon. But basically for about six days, every month, uh, every time you see a full moon, something like this happens on the surface. And even though we kind of don't actually get affected by it in any direct way, if we ever have a colony here or if we ever start living here, we have to be aware of these uh, unusual electrostatic dust storms. And of course, be uh, ready to get zapped by the moon's electrostatic uh, charges on the surface because uh, the difference in charge here, the actual voltage gets to about um, close to about 2000 volts, which is actually quite a lot of uh, voltage if you ask me. Getting zapped by that kind of voltage is not very pleasant. Now I've created a little bit more dust here just to kind of uh, make this a little bit more extreme and uh, this is actually just to kind of explain to you how we were even able to detect this kind of effect um, in 1972 uh, using something known as LEAM or Lunar Ejected Meteorite uh, Measurement System. This was back in... Uh, 1972 when Apollo 17 astronauts placed a kind of a really interesting device here to try to see how many dust particles are created by the collision um, with various asteroids or meteorites. And what they detected was that they didn't really see many uh, particles going up and down, but they saw quite a lot of particles going from east to west, which would actually indicate that um, there's a lot of dust that's been created um, by the electromagnetic interaction between the moon and between the um, earth magnetosphere and it got to the point where they actually had to turn off the instrument because it was getting overheated from all of these particles, dust particles, clogging the system and creating quite a lot of heat. Uh, so the actual effects of, of this dust on the moon might be a lot more dramatic than we currently think. Now, I was able to create this smoking moon that seems to have a very interesting tail coming from the back of it. And this kind of demonstrates to you what um, Earth might actually do to the moon when its magnetosphere interacts with the surface. Now, this is obviously the more extreme example, but it does represent visually what actually might happen to the moon's surface with some of the particles coming from the back here and some of them um, basically orbiting around. And I guess the word orbiting is actually not correct here because these uh, particles are uh, being levitated electrostatically and as soon as the electrostatic charge dies down, uh, these particles return back to the surface. 
And so, oh no, this actually might give you an idea that Moon is a lot more active and a lot more interesting and somewhat dangerous than um, we imagined before. So here, because of this electrostatic charge, there's quite a lot of things that might be going on on the surface that might uh, cr um, create a lot of problems for our future colonization missions and might also create a lot of problems for any kind of of a scientific mission that we decide to uh, start here. But at the same time, because of this natural creation of uh, essentially electric charge, maybe one day this is how we'll be able to easily um, produce electricity on the moon by basically placing this, these um, uh, electrostatic uh, collection stations that will create energies for basically cities of the future, you know, colonies of the future that might be stationed somewhere on the moon that might just essentially uh, collect all of their necessary electricity needs just from this uh, effect, not from the solar radiation, not from any kind of other um, phenomenon, but specifically here from the electrostatic charge that is um, created by both the sun and to a much larger extent uh, our Earth's magnetic magnetosphere. And I think that's all I wanted to mention in this video, and I really just wanted to talk about this unusual, very cool, but really interesting effect that is created on the surface of the moon by our planet Earth and its magnetosphere. Hopefully you learned something from this video, and hopefully you'll subscribe and share this video with, with your friends or someone who enjoys watching these videos. And thank you so much... Uh, to Vicky Bel Castello for uh, giving me this suggestion for asking this question because it actually made me realize that there were things about the moon that I had no idea about either. Anyway, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't and uh, consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. See you in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye. And Moon is now going to meet a much larger, much more interesting friend by the name of Sedna because we need to collide something with it to see what actually happens. And this is it.